Hi guys and welcome back to Learn Extra Live. It's physical science and we are having an awesome, awesome time. Okay, so I know that you've all been watching and you've all been joining us on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. Chat to us. Also at Learn Extra on Twitter. I'm here to help you with anything that you don't understand. So I've told you about the calculator and you guys all know the deal. But I just want to let you know that we've also got a labeler. And this fancy guy labels everything and anything that you would want or what you would need. But this one, we give one a day. So one on Monday and one on Tuesday, and this goes to the ultimate top mindsetter. So you've got to be posting all the time and learning more and, and, and inspiring each other, you know, to get, to get this awesome labeler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you back to full. Don't forget, if there is anything that you don't understand, please let us know on the page or on Twitter. There's no such thing as a silly question, only the question asked after the test or exam. Okay, full? Take it away. Thank you so much, Indy. Okay, well, you might be asking why I'm holding one of these. This is just a shortened ruler. This is half of a meter rule. Now, the problem that I posed to you before we went away was how do I get 20 meters and 5 meters and all of these measurements, which I'm measuring inside displacement, onto one of these? Now, there's no ways that I can go measure out 20 meters, especially if I've got to work on a page. The question is how do I represent 20 meters east using one of these? Now, the answer is I've got to use a scale. I've got to make these much smaller than they really are. Now, if you take out a map, it's not a life-size map. There's no ways that you can have a life-size map. The only life-size map out there is actually the ground that it's mapping. Now, it's impossible to measure these out, as I said. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these down and show you how to cram 20 meters onto one of these. And it's really quite easy. Now, working with scaling very often makes my learners very, very nervous, and it doesn't have to be that way. I'm going to show you how to make them smaller, how to make them much more manageable. First thing is I've actually got to choose a scale. What I'm going to do is put that down, and let's get right into this. How do I choose a scale? Well, it depends on how much space you have to work with. You can start with the ones which I give you, and pretty soon you'll start to get a feel for what we're doing. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift that slightly to the side, and let's pick our first scale. Now, I've chosen a scale which works very, very nicely for me, especially when we're starting to deal with tens of meters. You'll get an idea why I've chosen this scale in a moment. So what I'm going to do is I've got the scale over here, and I'm going to shift the scale to one side of my diagram. Very often you can put it up at the top or on the side, but I've actually got to show when I do a vector diagram, I've got to show what my scale is. So at the moment, we're saying that 2 centimeters on my diagram is representing 10 meters in real life. Now, that should start to make things a little bit easier. I can fit centimeters onto my ruler very, very easily. I can't fit 10 meters. So what I'm going to do is every time I see 10 meters, I'm going to fit it in by saying that it's 2 centimeters. OK, well, what then? OK, well, I'm going to start drawing these things. Where am I going to draw them? In which direction am I going to draw them? Because remember that vectors are all about the direction. So I've picked my scale over here, and I'm going to show you how to pick your own. And we've put it off to the side. How do we actually start to draw out our vectors? So you guys are going to need your pencils. You're going to need your pens. You're going to need your protractor and your ruler all in front of you. I want you guys to get ready. Now, I'm just going to go back to my directions again. First thing that we're going to start doing is we're going to take these apart. We're actually going to scale these down because I cannot fit these on the page, as I said. So I'm going to take 20 meters. I'm going to scale it out. I'm going to take 10 meters. I'm going to scale it out. Five meters, scale it out. Now, the question is, how do I actually do these strange ratios? And I'm going to show you a few tricks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my scale. I'm going to use my 2 centimeters to 10 meter scale. Now, the way to use a scale correctly is quite easy. It's the same way that I use in ratios. But I notice my grade tens don't really like ratios. I'm going to show you easy ways to work with them. So if I've got 20 meters, first thing I do is I write out my scale. My scale said 2 centimeters makes 10 meters. Now, the first one's actually quite easy because I see, OK, well, there's 20 meters, you know, there's, there's 20 meters to 10. OK, that's quite easy. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and figure out how many centimeters would I need to represent 20 meters. So that question mark is the problem. How do I figure that out? And I actually want you to set this out this way. So I've written out my scale over here. 
and I'm going to show you how to work with a scale properly because for some reason, I even struggled this, with this in high school. For some reason, it just didn't make a lot of sense. I've chosen a very easy scale, so some of you might be saying, oh, why is he using this very complicated method? Scales aren't always that easy. Any of the geographers out there, if you're reading maps, you've got to know how to do scales. Okay, now this is how this method works. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this up and I'm going to draw just like you would in a window. I'm going to draw the dividing lines between them. Now, it depends on what I've got. I have got, I've got one side over there. I've got my 20 meters. Now, the way that you work around here, I want to work from here around my ratio to land up in the other side. Now, here's the way to remember this. Now, if you've ever worked with triangles in terms of uh, times and divide, and I've started working with manipulating rela um, relationships between R, V, and I. If you've ever worked with a triangle, this is going to be very, very easy. Now, here's the rule. If I go over a flat line, that means that I divide. If I go over a vertical line over here, that means that I multiply. And then my very last one will be equals. Let me do that again. If I go over a horizontal line, that means that I divide. If I flip across that way, that means that I'm going to multiply, and I land up with my answer. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to write out the calculation underneath this on how to do the scales. So we're going to take 20. Because I'm going over a flat line, I'm going to say 20 divided by 10. And then what do I do? I go from 10 across to 2. So I'm working my way around to the one that I don't know, and I'm going to multiply by 2. So if we go 20 divided by 10 multiplied by 2, if you do this all together, I get 4 centimeters. Now, just one last check. 2 is to 10 what 4 is to 20. They seem to be in the same ratio. If you simplify them down, they should be in a 1 to 5 ratio. Now, if all of that seemed like gobbledygook, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it really, really, really slowly. We're going to make sure that everyone can work with the scale. Now. You may not see scales very often, but it's very important that you can do ratios anyway. So this is a useful skill nonetheless. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to work with something else. Now, 10 meters is a bit too easy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to work with 5 meters west. Let's scale 5 meters. So I write down my scale first. So my scale over here, my scale is 2 centimeters, represents... 10 meters, that's what I started with. Now what you do is you write underneath the relevant one or whichever one you've got, you write down what you have. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually gonna write this in white to make sure that we can see the difference between the two. I have five meters, I don't have the centimeters. So again, I've gotta work my way around here. I draw in my cross and then it becomes quite easy to see what to happen. If I go over a flat line, that means that I divide. If I go over a vertical line, that means that I multiply. So let's try this out. So I'm going to say 5 meters divided by 10, multiply across by 2, and then I land up with equals in terms of centimeters. Let me write this out for you so that you can see everything that's going on. Let's just bring that all into focus. So everything's on the screen at the moment. So I'm going to start out with my 5 meters. I divide it by 10 meters, so there's my ratio first. I multiply by 2 centimeters, and then I find that I've got a really, really short line over here. That means that I'd have to draw a line which is 1 centimeter. So there it is. I've managed to ratio to represent 5 meters in terms of centimeters, and they're in exactly the same ratio as before. So now I've made all of these lines much shorter. Let's actually list them as we go. I want you guys to practice at home using your ratios, using the same scale that we've got. So 20 meters became 4 centimeters. 10 meters is quite easy because 10 meters was my scale itself. So I'm pretty sure that you can guess that 10 meters is 2 centimeters. And then 5 meters makes 1 centimeter. So this is quite easy. All I've done is I've represented a very large distance in real life with a quite a small line using my ruler. 
So now I've used my scale and I've scaled down all my sizes. These are sizes which I can draw on my page. And that's exactly why I wanted you to have a ruler in front of you. I'm going to show you how to draw them and where to draw them and how to measure the end result. Okay, so let's take our information. Let's find out what's going on. So now I've picked my scale, right, and I've written my scale in the right direction. Okay, so now I've got all this empty space to work with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a blank space to draw on. Now you'll notice that inside that blank space, I've actually drawn a cross with a north. Now the reason that I've drawn a north is because I've been given all these directions. I've been given a reference to east. I've been given a reference to south and a reference to west. So now here's where you're going to draw with your pencil. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a slightly different color to the one which is on there. I'm going to pick green. Now. I want you guys to actually draw with a single-headed arrow, and what I'm actually going to do is make sure that that is just single-headed to make sure that this is absolutely correct. Let's make that a slightly smaller line. There we go. Now I'm going to ask you to draw with me. Now when I start drawing, I start at the center of this compass. So if you haven't done this before, that's great. That means that you're learning. Now we're going to draw in our first vector. So I'm going to put my zero at the middle of this little compass, which I've drawn, and this you're just drawing in rough with your pen. So now I've got my ruler over there. Now I'm going to make my first lines. Now, the 20 meters east, how did I represent that? Just remember the lengths that we had. We'd started to scale them. I had 20 meters east, then I turned 10 meters south, then 5 meters west. There's a lot of directions and a lot of distances. So let's keep track of them as we go. So now I'm going to draw in my first vectors. So the first one, 20 meters. I'm going to start from zero, and I'm going to draw all the way out to four. So I've measured out a four centimeter line. Now, here's a very good rule to remember. Anytime that I draw in a vector, what I've got to remember is that I've got to write out the value that it represents. So the value that I represent over here is that I've done 20 meters. Now, the reason that I don't have to say east is because I've actually drawn it on a compass itself. So there we go. We've gone 20 meters east. Now, there's a couple of tricks to what happens now. Now you've landed up in a new position. What I've got to do is I've actually got to start afresh from this side. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw in another tiny little cross. So you can start out from yourself if you want. Uh, what I'm actually going to do is let's represent that with a different color so that you can actually see what's going on there. I'm actually going to draw in a separate cross here. So I hope what you can see is that I've lined up with my original vector. My original vector strikes my new compass over there. And I can start drawing in my new vector over there. So I've now got 20 meters to the east, and I've got to draw in a completely new compass. So there we go. So we've got a new north reference line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my next vector. So I've got 10 meters south. Okay, so let's grab our rulers and let's draw in a 10 meter line. Now, if you were listening before, we're not actually going to draw 10 meters, but what I'm going to do is at the end of that arrow, I'm going to rotate my ruler around, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw directly down. Now, you guys are going to have to make sure that your ruler is pointing directly south. Now, you might say, how do I do, do that? Well, east and south are at 90 degrees to each other. You can check this with the protractor if you like, but it's not absolutely vital. So now I'm going to draw in my next one. So there we go, 10 meters south. Let's draw in 10 meters south, and let's see if we can draw that. So remember that 10 meters south was represented by having a 2 centimeter line. Now I'm just going to move that out the way, because unfortunately my ruler didn't let me have enough space. So let's just make sure that that is nicely in line there. So now I've got this 2 centimeter long line. Let's just measure it. Let's just make sure that I've got 2 centimeters over there. There we go, I've now measured it, it's two centimeters. Fantastic, that means that I've represented 10 meters south. You can write in south if you like, but since you've put in a compass there, you can actually see that that is the direction. Now for our last vector. Now just remember that it's a very good idea to actually draw in a new compass if you like, and we can do exactly that if we want. So there we go, so we've got a new compass to start off from, and we've got a new place to start. Now I'm going to draw in my very last vector. I'm going to remove all these compasses in a second just to leave the green lines so that I can actually see what I'm doing. So five meters. 
let's just summarize what we're doing in terms of lines. The 20 meters was represented by a 4 centimeter line. 10 meters was represented by a 2 centimeter line. There we go. I hope you can see that. Let's just make that a little bit neater because you guys want to read what I'm doing at home. Okay. So now that is a 2 centimeter line. And then the very last one is a 1 centimeter line. So that's what we're looking for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to draw in the very, very last one. So let's just make sure that we've got our ruler here. There we go. We're going to start at 0 there. And I'm going to rotate around my ruler so that I can draw again. So let's just put that neatly on the middle. It's not quite there. There we go. Let's rotate. And then as soon as it's locked nicely in that direction, I think we are almost there. There we go. And then I can put in my last one. I can put in my last vector. And that is a one centimeter line. So there we go. We can start tracing in our one centimeter line. Let's just make sure we got the correct one. There we go. A one centimeter line. OK, now this is all starting to look a little bit messy, so I'm going to tidy it up for you guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move away these other compasses. You can rub these out if they're made of pencil. And I just want to leave the vectors in place there. So now what I can see is that, let's just make that over there. There we go. Now, of course, you guys can't do this at home, but there's a very good reason I'm doing this. It's because I actually want to show you what happened in the meantime. So I went. Uh, 20 meters, 10 meters, and then 5 meters. Okay, we're in the last stages. What I want to do now is I want to find what is called my resultant. Now, these are all distances. If I was to walk, distance is a thing that I care about because I'd walk 20 meters in one direction, I would turn 10 meters in another, and then 5 in another direction. So what I'm actually caring about over here is how much distance I walked. But now, what is the end result? And that is my displacement. So what do I do to find my end displacement? Well, I've got to take a look at my diagram and realize where I started and where I finished. So from start to finish is all that displacement actually cares about. All of these distances told me about my directions and the total distance traveled we can actually add up. And I'm going to show you the difference between my displacement and my distance. OK, so now if I've got a neatly drawn diagram, how do I find out how much displacement there is? Well, I've still got my ruler on the screen. All that I've got to do is I've now got to measure what my final displacement is. And let's do exactly that. So now I've got my ruler over there. It's a little bit flipped over at the moment. So let's just get that in the right direction. Let's read with our millimeters. And let's bring it into our picture. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it off in the original position. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how far away we actually land up from our starting point. Now what you might notice is that that is much, much shorter than our original 20 meters. We actually walked backwards and found our position to be slightly different to our distance. Now that seems a little bit confusing. So let, let me just elaborate what that means. I'm going to draw in a line which goes from my start to my end. Now if you're really awake, you'll realize that this line actually represents my displacement. So my displacement is there on the screen as a blue line. The problem is that it's quite difficult to calculate. Can I measure it with a ruler if I've drawn very neatly and to scale? Absolutely. If you've drawn a very neat vector diagram with your directions absolutely correct, yes, you can actually measure this. And I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to show you how we can work this all out. Well, I'm from my starting point to my end point, I can actually measure this out in millimeters or centimeters. Since we're working in centimeters, let's work in centimeters over there. So let's just make sure that we measure it absolutely correctly. There we go. So from the beginning to the end, I see that it is around about 3.5 centimeters. Now, there might be some slight errors inside there. So please excuse me if you do spot those. But 3.5 centimeters is over there. Now, the question is, how many meters is that? So now I've measured out 3.5 centimeters, but now I didn't move 3.5 centimeters. Let's just make sure that's correct. I think that's a boo-boo. That is 3.5 centimeters. I'm sure that you're shouting at home and making sure that we're making the correct results over here. So that is 3.5 centimeters. So now I've measured it out with you guys. The question is, what is the real world difference? Well. I didn't move 3.5 centimeters. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to turn 3.5 centimeters into a real life distance again. So now let's take this through. Let's actually use our ratios. So there we go. 
I'm being told that we're running a little bit short and uh, people are probably sort of bleeding from the brain. Should I we take a break, Absolutely. Phil? Okay, that's exactly what we're going to do. And while we're taking a break, I'm going to have Phil have a look over some of the answers that you've posted to the challenge question. I think there's some goodies there. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little break. See you now. <laughs> 